I am so excited. Let's open up SolidWorks. Where are you at, SolidWorks? There you are. I'm gonna leave these guys the same. I'm not gonna change them because we, we want these connectors to be nice and tough, and I like how they feel. They're strong. This guy, a slope in here would be nice, but I don't know if I really, oh yeah, we could do that. Just a little bit, like a millimeter, maybe a two millimeter slope, eighth of an inch, maybe. Yeah, and then we just need to add the key. You know what, this thing fits in there so nicely. If we can keep it snug like that, we will be in business. All right. Here it is right here. Booyah, 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 booyah. Uh, we want to open up this guy here. Dude, this is just so cool being able to do this. Okay, whoa. What have I did? It was evil. There we go. All right, that one's fixed. Ah, oh, man, do I really want to put a pokey up on that? I mean, you have to. Oh, and if I wanted to do multiple different faces, my drip system would have to change, which I can do, because you can put a splitter in there. You put a T in and bring it out. All right, we'll save that for another day. Too tight, countersunk, pole, wizard. Oh, what are you? That's a number five. Number five, yep, it's a number five. Number five is alive. Hey, laser lips, your mama was a snowblower. May not print right, it's a very small countersink though. All right, so that faceplate has been updated and we don't need to, oh yeah, we need to update that, okay. That's updated. Now we come over to Simplify 3D, imports. Cover version two, outer shell version two, plant cup, we're gonna do a slant on that. Okay, so we're not ready yet. Back to the solid works. Lock it. Boom. The drain should probably be bigger than 1032, and it needs to be right down at the bottom. Slow internet, make work hard. All right, I just got done making all the updates I'm gonna make this time. The only thing I haven't done are the attachments in the back, and that's because I need to spend some more brain cells on that one uh, to balance the print with functionality. I am in Simplify 3D and I am simply moving stuff around to make it all happen, Captain. You know, I go from SolidWorks controls to Simplify 3D controls and I screw up every time, every time. Okay, and we'll print another set of goodies for the next one because those are not changing. Hole in it, we've got everything ready to rock and roll. Oh, should we press our luck and go to 0.6 millimeters? Print time on this is still gonna be 24 hours, yeah, 25 hours. If I went to 0.6, even worth uh, the process settings by, okay, all right. 20 hours, so I save five hours, what to do, and I lose resolution. Let's get, it's been great having this little settings file. I come in and as I figure stuff out, what works, what doesn't work, I'm just keeping track of it and I have all my basic settings in here. So if I go with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, then I also need to change my layer height uh, to match that. And it's just, my network is so slow. I got some form of RF problem going on, I need to fix it. RF is black magic. It's the black magic. That's why it's taking so long for this to uh, show up. So whatever, we're gonna leave it as 0.4 is what we're gonna do. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with how this turned out. That is nice. Nice and smooth. Oh, got a little problem on the edge there. That's not bad adhesion. So I should probably clean off the bed first and set up for the next print. Okay, it's gonna get 339 layers. It is going to take 500 grams, which means we are gonna run out of filament on this print. We will save this, call that V2. Gotta have version control, very important. And that's gonna have to heat up. So then let's go in, load V2, and now let's go clean the plate. The Windex, uh, I found it works, uh, but also these little electronic wipes seem to work very good. 
uh, just go in and get a good wipe down here first. I think this leaves less residue. I'm definitely gonna have to order some new PEI sheets for this. This one's not happy with me. I, uh, <laughs> beginner issues with this, uh, you know, the Creelty that I have doesn't have the PEI sheet, so I'm not used to this. And also, uh, the, uh, just getting it, learning how to use this particular tool, which is amazing. Uh, I am thoroughly happy with the tool. It just takes a while to learn how to use it, you know. It's not as simple as a hammer, you might say. Uh, but anyway, the issue on the sheets, one, I put them on wrong, and we've resolved that. Uh, two, this is actually feedback from the manufacturer. <laughs> it would be great if you actually showed on the screen the direction of the access uh, or have a key on here somewhere that, like right here, that shows directionality of the access because I made a mistake twice in the Z access of uh, going up when I needed to go down and what happened is I buried the nozzle into, uh, into the PEI. We're printing again. I do like it. Man, I tell you what, this is nice. This is nice going from idea to this. Very nice. I, you know, I've gone through a lot of filament and uh, I think it's about time we stop screwing around with a little stuff and go with a big, big roll. The biggest roll I've ever seen of filament. This thing is huge. Food safe, baby. True food safe. And it's even black licorice. Eight kilograms. 2,696 meters. Oh my goodness. 190 to 230 on the nozzle. Bed zero to 60, empty spool weight. Wow. That is a big, big old sucker. We're gonna need a different solution. We're gonna have to create a wall mount for this. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Cause that's big. All right, we can't do anything out here unless my light is on, or dad's light is on. Well, let me show you what's on there. All righty, here we go. Oh man, so nice and warm. It is 78 degrees in there, right over there. And we have our second print with the updates of our grow boxes. I don't, I don't know what we're gonna call them yet, the grow wall boxes. Regardless of what we call them, they're freaking awesome. Duh, duh. That off of there, all right. Let's go set this out. Put that there, those there, and throw this in the trash. So here's version two here, version one here. Let's start off with the differences that we made. First on the uh, cartridge, I, I, coming up with names for stuff, you know, you gotta go through marketing and come up with cool names, but I'm just gonna call it, it's my little cartridge, it's the bowl. Cartridge seems nice right now. The magazine, ooh, ooh, I like the magazine. Okay, the only change that we made from version one to version two, which let's put our mark on this, is that we added a slope uh, to the inside just enough to where water uh, will slide up. Now, if you're wondering what's gonna sit in these, it's hoarder cubes. Really nice, just like this. Uh, they'll sit in there, you put your plant in, water comes in, we can move it back and forth, water lays on there. Actually, we might have to reverse that slope now that I look at it, because we want water to kinda pool up in there. We might. We might actually end up taking off the slope. Uh, now that I have these, they, they arrived and I found them. They were in quarantine. Uh, so now we can play with that, but it fits just perfect. As you can see, it's almost like it was designed. <laughs> Another difference that we made, if you remember, we have no directionality in version one. So one of the things we had to do was add a pokey uh, fitting. So what I did is I added a little uh, ledge there and now this only goes in one way. And we also change uh, the uh, gap here so it should fit a lot better. And it does. And if it's nice and snug. Uh, another thing I did, which I'm not sure I'm going to keep, is I added uh, countersink holes uh, to the screw, screw holes so that everything goes in there all nice. But this, this is fitting in there nice. We might actually have a little too much of a gap. I mean, it's like quarter of a millimeter, and which is what I think I added in there. So <clears throat> that's been fixed. We added the gap. We did the pokey We did the countersunk. All right, so let's take that out. That works a lot better than this one. Remember how tight this guy was and getting it out. We might go back to, yeah, 
who knows we'll go so anyway let's put v2 on here now we have the actual container itself uh, put v2 one of the things we needed to do was change the dimensions of these guys uh, which are the interfaces interconnects boy that's still really tight we need to add a little more gap in there those are still too tight they got to go all the way back in there and then what happens is these guys interconnect like this okay you can get the idea they're going to interconnect like this uh, and then you can stack them out put them on the back of your counter there and you have your little this guy holds everything in put that in there boom you're growing boom just like that you're growing boom and your roots got a lot of root area there uh, what we also did on v2 is we added a 3 8 drain hole down here at the bottom for uh, water coming out now if we're doing this right we should never need a drain hole because we should only be putting the exact amount of water in that is needed and since each one of these can be controlled and is on a pressure compensated emitter which are now purchased and on the way we should be good to go there but man oh man it, those, aren't those nice you know it's interesting you could also go horizontal with these with some minor mods um, one of the things i'm going to be doing today is i'm going to be updating these face plates we can mrs martian and i sat out here i had a little bit of creative thinking i i got some whiskey and sat here and just had a little snort and was getting all creative and uh, we decided that we should really go with a mixture of different face plates so based on what you're growing, you can have different face plates that go with these. And uh, you could even go horizontal. You could go horizontal. Um, you'd have to plug the dr new drain hole and all that. But you could, you have a lot of options here uh, of what you could do. So I'm, I'm excited to see those options. I, I got a lot of ideas. I, I'm excited. I couldn't sleep last night because of this. It's really cool. I think these are going to be great things. And uh, you might be wondering why is it not centered, and the reason it's not centered is so that the roots can go down, and you can have a root wad down there. Whereas if you put it right in the middle, you don't have as much space for your roots, and you're kind of, kind of wasting space. This is a very functional design right now. What would you do different? How would you make it look different? How would you make it look cooler? What would you want? Talk to your wives. 98% uh, of the people who watch this channel are, are male. Talk to your wives, talk to your girlfriends. Show them this, ask them, what would it take uh, for me uh, to make this nicer so that they would want to have it up on their backsplash. Would they even want to do that at all? The idea of being able to grab fresh vegetables here, what color scheme would they like to see? We have some work to do on that area, uh, some things that I'll be sharing in future videos, but uh, tell me what your thoughts are on this. I'm, I'm super excited about this design, if you can't tell, uh, and we are just uh, literally probably a week or so away from actually growing stuff in these uh, once the emitters get here and then also we need the nutrient solution which I really want to be aquaculture yeah let me know what you think guys thanks for following along I hope you enjoyed this video of the big reveal uh, you can join us on patreon if you want to see these things ahead of time you can actually join us on patreon for patrons that are five dollars or higher you actually get uh, early access to all of our designs it's a new perk we just put in place and also um, for patrons that are $20 or mo per month or higher, uh, the 3D printer files will be available so you can download and play with them yourself and we can all work together as community because our mission here is to provide sustainable food and energy to local communities around the world. If you want to be a part of that, join us on Patreon and you can be directly involved in the design process, getting the design files. So we can go from there. But thanks for following along. You can uh, also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. And again, Patreon is an option for those who like to support us. We really believe that we're making some good content here and we continue to get better. We take your feedback on the video uh, process, the uh, audio, the editing, everything, and we're trying to get better and better. And Mrs. Marsh and I really want to provide during these really hard times, entertaining, thoughtful, inspirational, and hopeful videos and helpful, hopeful and helpful videos uh, for everybody out there. So if you do join us on Patreon, that's what you're contributing towards. So just by being a patron, you can help get this message out and you can join the platform that is The Real Martian. Thanks again for following along, everybody. Have a wonderful day. This is The Real Martian, out.